Hi everyone, welcome to Quick Cyto. I'm Varsha Manucha and today I will briefly discuss follicular patent lesions that you may encounter while reviewing fine needle aspirations of thyroid nodule. First and foremost are follicular neoplasms which includes both follicular adenomas and follicular carcinomas. The distinction between the two is based on histologic evidence of capsular and vascular invasion and since that cannot be demonstrated cytologically, the two are grouped together as follicular neoplasms on, in cytology. The most important feature that should make you think of follicular neoplasm in a, on a cytology specimen is altered architectural pattern in at least a moderately cellular smear with absence of colloid in the background. This is a difficult stain smear of a follicular neoplasm which eventually turned out to be a follicular carcinoma with angio and capsular invasion and as you can see the smear is at least moderately cellular and is comprised of a predominantly uh, microfollicular pattern and some of these microfollicles are aggregating together to form larger clusters. Microfollicles are defined as small follicular groups of 6 to 12 follicular cells mostly less than 15 follicular cells in a ring with some nuclear overlapping with or without a small amount of central colloid. Besides microfollicular pattern, the cells of follicular neoplasm may be present in cords and ribbons with significant cellular crowding and overlapping as you see on this image. This is a high power image demonstrating cellular crowding and some microfollicles. Now the cells of follicular neoplasm have round nuclei with smooth nuclear outline, fine chromatin and inconspicuous nucleoli. Mild nuclear changes reminiscent of papillary thyroid carcinoma such as nuclear enlargement, pale chromatin and occasional grooving are allowed in this category and should raise the possibility of infiltrative follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma or its more indolent type, the non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary-like nuclear features or NIFTP. These should be categorized as follicular neoplasms and not in the malignant category. The differential diagnosis of follicular neoplasm includes an adenomatoid or a hypoplastic nodule, the smears of which can also be moderately to highly cellular and can show a minor population of microfollicles as best seen in the lower portion of this image. However, the overall pattern with presence of colloid in the background, macrofollicles, flat sheets and intact spheres should lead us to the diagnosis of a benign follicular nodule. Also in the differential diagnosis are parathyroid adenomas that can be extremely challenging to differentiate from follicular neoplasms. The smears as in this case are hypercellular comprised of cohesive cellular aggregates with prominent vascular network and increased naked nuclei in the background. The cells of parathyroid adenoma have uh, moderately abundant glandular cytoplasm reminiscent of hurdle cells. However, unlike hurdle cells, they are monomorphic in appearance. This is another example of parathyroid adenoma which was submitted as a thyroid FNA. Notice the presence of cohesive cellular aggregates, increased number of naked nuclei in the background and presence of lipid vacuoles in the cytoplasm of the cells and also in the background. Together all these features should make you suspect a parathyroid adenoma. The risk of malignancy for follicular neoplasms varies between 15 to 30 percent and the management includes molecular studies if available and if not then lobectomy. I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. Until next time, bye.